Hi, my name is Ryan Langwish, and this is Luda Lodge, a channel about sparking growth in your journey as a game designer. Today, I'm going to be continuing my series about scripting and tabletop simulator, um, and specifically answering probably one of the most common questions that I've gotten on some of my other videos that I've done. Um, and if this is your first time watching watching one of my scripting videos, I do have a playlist of a bunch of examples and stuff um, that you may be interested in checking out. I'll link that in the uh, in the description below. Um, but the question I've gotten quite a few times is, okay, this is great. This is, you know, an example that works, maybe sets up cards or something. But what if I also want to connect it to this other thing? Or maybe I want this piece to call a function that's in, in some other piece and kind of get this interconnected, you know, calling of scripts within my mod. Um, and kind of not knowing how to piece those things together. And so that's kind of what I'm going to cover in this video. Tabletop Simulator, the, the Lua API makes it quite simple actually to call functions on other objects. I just haven't really talked about it yet because all my examples have been pretty isolated. Um, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit with a simple example and also kind of why that's useful. Um, but you know, besides the fact it allows you to connect some things that maybe you otherwise wouldn't know how to. Really the heart of it is kind of a code organization uh, benefit. Because suppose we were making a game where we want to have kind of a scripted setup. That's a pretty common use case of scripting in Tabletop Simulator is you want to click a button, have everything get set up, maybe set up based on the number of players or, or other factors, kind of intelligently sets up the game. And there may be a lot of different things that need to get set up. There may be multiple decks that need to get shuffled and laid out. Maybe there's a deck that specifically, because you have three players, needs to be set up in this way um, and shuffled and dealt out to this location. So there's all these different things, and you certainly could do kind of what I've done in previous examples, where maybe you have a setup button, and that setup button's code for when it's clicked is just all of the code for that. It gets the GUIDs of every object on the table, it does all the logic to set up each individual piece, and it's just kind of one massive script. That works, but it's kind of a lot, and like when you're having to have to go back and edit that, it's just a lot of code in one place, and it can be a little hard to manage. What's better is if we're able to have each of the components, the, the tiles, each deck of cards, whatever it is, kind of own their own code of how they're set up. So, you know, this deck of card has a setup function that just pertains to how that deck is set up. And these tiles know how to set themselves up. And those are all within those objects themselves. And then our setup script doesn't have all that logic. It's simply telling each of those things, hey, you set yourself up, you set up, set up, set up, and it makes our, our uh, button script for the scripted setup very clear and easy to read. Um, so we're going to do a pretty simple example here, which is I'm going to pull in, and it's actually going to be somewhat similar to a previous example I did. Um, oops, did I bring out cards? Um, a previous example I did, which was... Oh, I just didn't click into here. Um, it was clicking a button and it kind of dealt out a row of cards next to the deck here. Um, and so before I go further, I'm actually going to save this because in Tabletop Simulator, when we're doing any scripting, if we save our scripting changes, it goes back to the last save file. So if I haven't added these components into my save file, I'll lose them. So I want this deck to stick around. And so we're just going to start with something that if you've seen my previous video on scripted card setup will look pretty familiar, which is just getting this deck um, to deal out cards next to it. So if I go into the scripting editor here, make sure I'm in Lua, we're just going to add a function on load, which is what gets called every time the game is loaded. And we're going to have another function that is shuffle and deal. Maybe um, that's what needs to happen. Um, with this particular deck in the setup is it needs to be shuffled and then just dealt out into a row. So we're going to call that here, shuffle and deal. And in that, first to just test this, let's do self.shuffle, which that's because this is a deck, we can call shuffle on it um, to shuffle it. So if we save and play, we'll actually see that it shuffles here because when it was loaded, it called that and shuffled. So we know our scripting is kind of hooked up correctly here. But then we also want it to deal a row out to the side of it. So what we're going to do is we're first going to get the position of the deck. So I'm going to store that in a local variable, self.getPosition. 
And the reason we're getting the position of the deck is so that we can manipulate that value to determine where the cards are gonna go out next to it. Um, and so we're gonna wanna loop. I'm gonna just do five cards out to the side of it. We'll do i equal to one to five, do. And for each time through the loop, we want to take an object from the deck. Um, so self is the deck, take an object from the deck. And then the parameter for this is going to be a Lua table where we give it the, there's a bunch of different parameters you could provide here, but we're gonna do flip equal to true. That's what's gonna tell it to actually flip the card and not keep them face down. And then we're gonna provide a position of where we want it to be which is gonna be another table of like an X, Y, Z value. And so what we're gonna do here is deck position. We wanna use the deck position. We're gonna do the first value, which is the X value, plus, and then we're actually gonna do three times I, where I is which time through the loop we are. If this is confusing to you, I highly recommend going back to the other video because I talk about this more in detail. But it's basically the first time through, it's going to add three, then it's going to add six, then it's going to add nine, which is going to effectively put them into a row. For the other uh, Y and Z positions, we just want to use the original deck. The only value that's changing is it moving to the right. Um, so let's see if that worked. Save and play. Look at that. So you can see it shuffled and then it dealt those cards out. And if we do this each time, it should be different cards because it's always shuffling before it goes. So that looks like it's working. And like I said, we could certainly um, set this up with a button and we could have put all that logic into the button. But here we've put this function in the deck itself. So the deck kind of has its function for setting up. So now instead of attaching this to onload, and let's actually group, well actually I guess once I save and play it'll be, so it didn't deal it this time um, because we're no longer calling it, right? Our function exists but we're no longer calling it on load. And maybe we have more than one deck as well. So I could actually copy and paste some more decks and each one of these is going to have its own copy of that function because it copied all the scripts attached with it. So you can see each of these have identical scripts. Obviously if we were doing setup for a game, you know, you might have decks that have different logic of how they get set up. But we're going to keep this example pretty pretty simple. Um, and what I want is I want to add a button that then calls those methods on each of these decks. And that's where we're at really the heart of this video is kind of knowing how to call out to another object um, to call a function. And so if you're a regular on the channel, you know my handy dandy black checker is how I typically add buttons in these videos. I flip it. If you don't flip it, a lot of times your button might look like it's you can't see it because it's actually uh, being shown like under the table. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come into the UI for it, which is where I can kind of add some HTML-like tags for some um, interface elements. And so again, if you've seen other videos, this is going to look pretty familiar. I'm going to go pretty quick here. On click is where we're going to define the function we want to call. So I'm just going to call that uh, new round. Uh, position, we're going to set equal to 0, 0, negative 30. We're going to do width equal to 600. We're going to do height equal to 200. Font size equal to 72. And then inside the tags, that was all the first tag. And then inside of the tags, we're going to say the text that we want on the button. And then we're going to close the button tag. Um, so this is all things we've done in, in other videos. Uh, let's save and play there. And let's see. Oh, I made the classic mistake that I make in almost every single video, which is that I did not save my game when I added the checker because the checker is an object in the game, so I need to go and overwrite here. In fact, you'll notice, before I do that, none of my copying of decks stayed either, because it went back to the last save file. It's probably good I make this mistake in every single video, because it reminds you not to make it. I'm, I'm, you know, serving the community with my just repeated errors. 
So we've got everything where we want it to be. Let's save that into here, overwrite. And now we can get into scripting. Um, so let's go back and just do that all again. So I'm gonna go in here, I'll try to make it snappy. Now if we save and play, it's gonna, I didn't flip my checkers, this is what I was talking about. It's upside down. When I pick it up, you can see it's actually displaying beneath the table. That's another question I get a lot from people is why isn't my button showing up? It might be because your checker is not flipped the right way. Oh my, I'm in 15 degree increments. Um, okay, we've got a button, we're alive. And actually, because we manipulated the checker, let's go in here, let's overwrite the file. <laughs> so we should be good. Anytime you make any changes to where objects are, how they're oriented, anything that's not scripting, you have to save them there before you go and do scripting or you're potentially gonna lose them. Um, all right, we have our button. We have these that each have um, the functions that we want. Let's see, let's go here. Scripting. So each of our decks has, um, we're in the UI, but in the Lua it has this function. And we basically now want our checker, which is when it's clicked, it's gonna call new round. We need to go into the Lua and actually add that function. Whoa, jumping around. Um, okay, it wants to scroll like that. I also have a previous video that talks about how to use the Atom Editor plugin, which lets you uh, edit your scripts in a much nicer environment, um, and then import them back and forth through here. I can link that as well. It's a good one to use. If you're gonna be scripting regularly in Tabletop Simulator, you're gonna want to uh, use that instead of using this editor, most likely. So, but hopefully this is just a visual quirk here. Function new rounds, that's what's gonna get called when, when this button is clicked. Oh, there we go, it corrected itself. And this is where we want to, on each of those other decks, call their shuffle and deal function. And so we're first gonna need to get those decks. So whenever we wanna get an object, we're gonna have to do it um, by getting the it by GUID. So when we load, let's grab all those. So I'm gonna do like deck one equal to get object by it's from, I always do that, from GUID. And this is where we're gonna get paste that. So I've gotta go out here, I can right click this, um, throw this over here. scripting, and then if you click this, it'll copy it to your clipboard. So that's the GUID for that deck, which is unique, thus the term unique ID. Um, and that's gonna be deck one. And so we're just gonna do this for each of our decks um, so that we have references to them. The fact that I'm not putting local in front of this variable is what's gonna allow this variable to be accessed throughout my whole script, even in other functions. If I put local here, that would mean it's only accessible within this scope, within the scope of this one function. Little tidbits. Um, so let's grab those other GUIDs. We want deck two, GUID, replace this guy, and deck three. Scripting, copy. I'm not doing right now what I kind of recommend, I think, in past videos, which is to kind of grab all your GUIDs in global and then have other um, scripts access it from global. So you have like a single source of truth and different objects can do it. For this example, I'm just gonna load them here. It's, it's not a huge deal. So now we have all these, and so when we click new round, this is, this is what you came here for. If nothing else, this is the point of the video, which is how do we call a function on another object from here? And the answer is in the name of what I just said. It's the call function. So call is how you're gonna call something on another object. So here I'm saying deck one call, and then I'm just gonna provide literally a string text that's the name of the function I wanna call. I'm gonna say shuffle and deal. And I'm gonna do that for all of them. Because they all have an identical, oops, not spotlight search. Two, three. And so now, if we save and play, let's see what happens when we click this button. Boom, shuffle and deal. And actually I could just like keep doing that, right? <laughs> it's gonna like stack the cards. And so just to, to 
solidify what's happening here. We've got our checker that has a button. When we click it, it goes to new round, which new round for each one of these objects, each one of these decks that it grabbed, it's gonna call the shuffle and deal function, which is in that particular deck. And so you can see how if you were doing a full scripted setup, this would allow you to have every individual area or component have its own setup logic in that object and then have kind of like a controller object that then just goes through and sets up all the things. And would end up looking like a very clean function. If you, if you name your, your uh, functions well, it'll kind of read like this component is going to call this method, setup method. This is going to call this and it's going to go all the way through, um, which works out very nicely. And that's the main thing I wanted to highlight here to just give some little tidbits on top of that, just things to know kind of about the call function. Um, one is that you could do global.call in the same way instead of calling it on an object, in which case it would call a function defined in your global Lua. So that you could define things here and call them from other places. Um, the other thing is you might have a function that takes parameters or arguments to it. So like right now this is empty, but it may be that this takes, you know, some params or something. Um, and you would want to pass things to it when you call it. And so the call function, you can actually provide a second parameter, which is a table of parameters. So I could do a Lua table with any number of things in it. If that's something you're interested in doing, I highly recommend checking out the Tabletop Simulator API docs for the call method. It explains how that works and even shows an example. Um, but it does have that capability um, if your function requires arguments. And there you have it. Hopefully, maybe that was a question you had. Maybe you were aware of this. It's a pretty simple thing. Like I said, it's making it pretty easy, but it can. if you don't know about that ability, it can kind of be hard to figure out how do I connect these things? How do I make this all work? But that's really the powerful connective tissue to be able to call, keep your code with a bunch of different objects and call between them to, to organize how, how your scripting is working. Um, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Maybe check out some of the other videos I have on Tabletop Simulator and scripting. Either way, I will see you in the next one.